Hi, welcome to Meeples on Meeples, episode 20. My name is Ian. Patrick. Brian. Andrew. Before we get started, please remember, if you haven't already, please join us on Meeples on Meeples on Facebook and Meeples on Meeples on YouTube to watch all of our videos. Today's game is Cadwall City of Thieves, and it's a fairly simple competitive game in which you take the role of a Thieves Guild. When you take the role of a Thieves Guild, the, each Thieves Guild has a series of cards and a color, and you would get all the characters associated with that guild. So all the characters on red, one person would get gold, green, blue, etc. At the beginning of the game, each individual, uh, the game is set up, and as, as you set it up, it's a one-piece board, you have these little treasure chest tokens. And different rooms in the city get a treasure chest token placed in them. And the goal is to gain the most treasures before the end of the game and then to get out of the city before the city closes down and you get caught. After the treasure chests or to uh, treasure tokens are placed, you decide which scenario you want to play. The game comes with eight scenarios with it. Each has a little bit of twists on the rules. The game plays fairly similar through all the scenarios, but they have a little twists on the rules depending on what scenario you choose. Once the scenario is chosen, you each roll a dice. The player with the highest dice total gets to place their character first. And one at a time, you place one of your characters on an opening or an open space on the outer edge of the board. And you go around one at a time, each placing one figure each time round until all figures have been placed. There are two soldiers or militiamen that guard the city from your thieves' skills. One starts in the treasury and one starts in the militiamen's home territory. Once it is set up, the game plays fairly simple. You have a total of seven actions on your turn represented by these clear red markers. Each character can take two actions. One movement action, which allows you to move the number of spaces indicated by the arrow on your card. In this case, this character has four move actions. And then you can also take another type of action, such as if you end up in a room with a chest, you can roll to open that chest, that costs one action token, and you have to roll a number that is lower than the number next to the crown or your mind stat. You can choose instead to bash open a chest, now that means you don't have to roll, which means you don't have to worry about not opening a chest, but it counts for two of your total seven tokens that you have to, on your turn. And you move all of your characters taking those, those rolls. The only other action that you can really take during your turn is if you move into a space with an opponent's figure, you can fight that. As a matter of fact, you have to fight that character. That takes another action token. When you fight that character, your card tells you how many dice you roll. It's the number next to the fist. In this case, this person rolls two dice. You roll that number of dice. You don't add them up. Your opponent rolls the number of dice they can roll during an attack, and you compare the highest numbers towards each other and the highest of the two numbers wins. Whoever wins gets to steal a treasure or coins from their opponent, ducats, and then gets to move the loser three spaces in their chosen direction. After so many rounds, the city starts to get locked down, and one at a time these gates are placed in the openings or in the uh, access points that you start off in the board. So there's only so many open spaces on the side of the board left open. And then you'll have so many rounds to get your character with all the treasures they've gained off the board. When your character gets off the board successfully, you get all the points for the treasures that character was carrying. If you do not get a character off the board in the given amount of time that you in the allotted amount of time that you have, you lose three three ducats or three coins because uh, they were captured by the militiamen, and you lose all the points that they have for their treasures. The person with the most treasures at the end of the game wins the game. So that's pretty much play. Anyone else want to add anything? You could have just played the game about it that fast. Yeah, <laughs> just showed up, here's, here's the entire game. Let's play it out. No, it was a very long game. It, it, it did turn out to be a very long game this last time. It's this, always a long um, game. Should we start with components? Components. Now, the, yeah, the one that we're showing you now, we have the painted figures. These painted figures do not come with the game. You can buy them uh, extra from Fantasy Flight, the figures do uh, the painted figure, pre-painted figures do not come with the game. The game comes with the same figurines; they just don't have the paint on them. They're just, just solid gray, gray. Yeah. and it's a little hard, sometimes a little hard to tell them apart. But the painted ones are very nice. I mean, they did a pretty good job on them. Um, so I, I, the components, there's, the there's board some... is nice looking. Um, you know, the cards are fairly well made. 
There's one thing, I don't like the little cards, but that's just to each their own. I actually don't mind the... It's You can tell, as soon as you see these cards, you can almost always assume it's a Fantasy Flight game. They love this size. But it just it's just because you already have your characters, and then you've got these red discs, and then you start to build treasure chests up next to them. So I appreciate that they're trying to cut down. You already have so much clutter on your side. I see why they did it, but... The plastic, <laughs> uh, they call them ducats, is that what yep, they are? They're the, little, the coins, I mean, but they're plastic, and they're all printed, and... They're pretty nice. Different colors for different denominations, which is sweet. They yep. could have gone the cheapo cardboard route. Do we want to talk about the bases? Or they could have just put like ones or twos, and they all could have been the same color. We all kind of complained yeah. about the bases on these things. As the well. bases. The, the actual game comes with colored discs that you slip on the, the figure's bases. Um, they aren't pre-painted, so they have the colored bases that they slip on. Uh, without those colored bases that you slip on to identify what uh, guild that they have, it's kind of hard to tell what guild they is. You have to kind of look closely to see well, who they belong to. When I was, he said bases, I was thinking more of the lines of the bases are all warped on several mm -hmm. of them, and they I mean they they stand up fine, but they yeah they rock a little. It's not even. They need to be flattened out a little bit, but yeah, the, the bases. The and figurines that could be different are really with nice. every copy, though. That's yeah. just this particular copy. The, the, the figures themselves, even the uh, unpainted miniatures, are pretty well detailed and pretty well designed. They, they look yeah. pretty nice. And I mean, all the little pieces are pretty thick cardboard, which is nice. You know, I mean, I could push on this and I could maybe bend it, but you'd have to really try. Yeah. And same with the treasures. What about the whole board? It's uh, it's not interlocking, but it is a fold out. It's but just a solid board, piece. So it's not. Is there two sides to this? Board? No, there's only one side to the board. Now they do have an expansion to this that that was sold. Um, that's the under or underneath. It's kind of like the sewers under Cadwall, and you can add. You play one there. or the other. Do you play, you play them both together? Together, side yeah, by really? really? They're they're played oh, together yeah. as a unit, and we haven't done that yet. There's a fifth player option. There's um there's weapons options where you can use weapons and actually do more damage to each other and this game is already complex i don't know yeah it, 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 it adds getting... it adds a lot more complexity once you once you add the addition onto it which is i like the way they out. did the art and i'm glad they went with a subdued color palette throw mm -hmm. some fancy words here but everything's kind of dark and shadowy and you're supposed to be well thieves sneaking around it fits the theme fairly well i think sometimes i think it's hard to understand where the boundaries are as far as true you can't there, there especially if it's on a seam like that yep and yeah. the ends washing the it out as far as the getting it brighter and the yeah, brighter white the bright, like right here there's getting a boundary that's or this one i don't get why they did that this is a red line to separate the houses basically walls are red lines and then out the street they have white lines to separate the spaces but this it looks like it's sewn together in that it doesn't look like a wall anymore. It's like the only wall. It's a dividing like wall. It's a, yeah. it's a movable wall. Yeah, is that what it is? You just slide <laughs> it's it. A, it's one of those fan walls that you can set up. So it's it's just you wouldn't even know it's a wall if you didn't look really closely. So oftentimes people would try to move them like, nope, you can't do that. You got to go out and around because there's a wall there. That and, actually and, happened I think two or three times mm -hmm. in this yeah, particular that game. that particular well, one. Because and the bases are big, so I mean, you put one guy in there, and if you're looking from over here, you don't really see it. Yeah. True. I mean, especially if you put the treasure in there next True. to it i mean it's almost hard to see it yeah there's there's a lot of stuff going on in that small room um some of these rooms are very so small that once you have a treasure and one guy in there uh, if we were to go in there and battle each other mm -hmm. i mean it, it gets pretty now the battle actually there. happens in there <laughs> it all happens with dice yep it's, you know? right yeah. right um keeps it pg are, are we moving into gameplay here or? sure yeah let's do that like strategy wise sure um I don't know, you won. As far you, as... You want to yeah, what's your strategy, Winter Man? 30-something... <laughs> My strategy four. is to play dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Act like you don't know what's going on, and everybody's like, oh, he's just, we're just going to walk all over him. Uh, no, I, I honestly didn't really have a strategy. Uh, I just kind of kept building it up and kept just watching, playing it smart, letting, you know, make sure you gotta, you're got you watching other people steal from each other. Well, and I like how the game plays in two acts because of that. At first, there's a treasure in every building. So when everybody rushes in, your first initial reaction is, okay, I'm going to place my guy closer here so I'm close to all these doors, and I'll, I'll go into these buildings and I'm stealing treasure. And you're focused just on leaving each other alone and getting treasure in the first, probably half the game. Mm -hmm. And then as the treasure gets picked over after even the second round, pretty soon you realize there's very little treasure left on the border or it's all way over there away from me. And then it becomes a, now I have to battle, try to hinder my opponent. And that's when you have to start watching, like, who has the most treasure. Because if I fight them, I can steal that treasure. Well, it's like a four-step game, really. It's it's initial setup. It's um, Smart placement, yeah, I would smart agree. Smart placement. And then you have your um, grabbing your treasures right away. Battling, Smash and grab. Yeah, battling it out of each other. And, and then, then escape. And then escape. and then oh, But also the placement of the gates at the end. Yeah, I, right. yeah the placement of the gates, I think, it's, it's almost a five-step. Because right. you want to place uh, each person once at a, one at a time, like placing your characters, place one of these gates, closing off and escape. 
and you have to see where your characters are, and you kind of jostle your characters into position. When you start to see yourself getting close to that alarm period when they're going to close <laughs> the gates, you kind of try to jostle your characters to a possible open spot and just pray that the gate doesn't Actually, open. I'm going to... Well, I almost disagree with what you said. Two of us had characters right on the edge. Who Was it you and I? Each had a character right on the edge. And I think you're at a disadvantage. Well, I mean, when the gates go down, the first thing people do is like, oh, that person's about to escape. Boom, well, and they I block you off. I said just to place. I agree with you. You don't boom, want to be right boom, on. Boom, boom. And they block you off. I don't think you want to be right on. I don't think End game, you want to be in the middle. Because you're close to every exit that way. Well, my character was in the middle, but I kept getting pushed back because that's well, where that's, the action was at. And that's where... That's true, too. But I found you definitely don't want to be right on the edge because that's the first thing people can do. I'm going to close down there, there, there. And then you that know, person's nowhere near an exit. I, I found it was pretty good because I had two guys that were one. Or they were in buildings to where you'd almost don't look at it. At least I didn't when I was putting the pieces out. I was like, oh, okay, that guy. And you see him inside the building, and you don't think about, like, oh, now he's got four steps to get this way. Like, he's just out of the game for some reason. That was what went through my head, so... The, the other thing is, I, I don't think we were... <laughs> he We got smoked in this by, by Andrew here, but... Um, I don't think we're aggressive enough. I think we you have to be more aggressive. When you start to see somebody building up a lot of treasures, you have to pay attention. We weren't really paying attention to each other's cards a bit, too much. The treasure did change hands. Oh, it did. I, cl- I accumulated I like started off a strong lead. Did. Right off the bat, I had a ton. And then I everybody just whooped me. Yep. And then I had to pick it back at but, the but end. When Andrew started getting going off like gangbusters, it, uh, one thing he was far away from a lot of people. And second thing, I, I don't think he, I was aggressive at getting him. Well, we were aggressive at getting you though when you were. Yes, yeah, so you were. You were very. And, and you ended up with a negative one. No, well, like, yeah, kind of so, of, so, I told the city. That was part of one of my strategies though. Is once I started collecting a bunch of stuff, I didn't say anything, but I would try to stay away from people, to where you would have to come towards me, where it was at a disadvantage for you. Like, there was a whole bunch of treasures over here left. Well, I moved all my guys over here. Because people still wanted treasures, mm-hmm. and they didn't want to come and attack me. so I think the other strategy is uh, at the beginning of your turn, you get to roll to move your militiamen. And I think this is a great strategy of mm-hmm. if you can't necessarily fight an enemy with a militiaman, when the militiaman uh, wins an attack, they take any extra ducats you have on the board, and they send you running three spaces of the winner's dis- determination. And so utilizing these guys wisely and placing them in the right place or attacking the right people to get them away from the gates at the end of the game. Um, or just blocking alleyways, you know, put them there so nobody can get through. Or is it, it's, it's they, also they were great, great as blockers. I've used them as blockers, I think, almost more than I have as attackers because you don't have to use the full, say you roll a six. You don't have to block well, them six. six. You can they stop would. them at Well, six four. they don't move at all, actually. It's oh, one through right. five they move. I'm sorry. So say you roll a five or whatever, you know, it, you don't have to move the full amount. Yeah, and you can just block somebody in. And well, because you can't move into their space at all. Yeah, you, you can't can move, move in or through. Or right. you can move through if you have the if you have, there's there's a special, special ability there's one, characters. There's, well, there's cards that'll let you do it, and then there's one guy in the game that Which I is, can do it. Which is actually something else we should mention is everybody has four different... I mean, you have 12 different uh, characters or miniatures mm-hmm. on the board, and they all have a special ability, so keep track of those abilities because that... Does affect yeah. gameplay. It also, like one person can of, pass through people. Well, it seems like you lose yourself in that too. You're like, you kind of you're playing, you're playing, you're playing, and then you're like, oh yeah, I have ability. I should probably yeah. look at that. Yeah. So I don't know if that's a plus or a minus on that part, but it does add a little bit more. It, but it also starts to take up your red tokens, which is the downside too. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to spend your action points to use those. So, abilities. Some of them do. Some of them yeah. are, are free. Um, do we want to write this game, or is anyone th- anything else anyone wants to say? Do you guys want to talk about artwork? Or artwork, we, yeah. Uh, well, we, we, I already kind of talked about the, talk the, about the, the dark. And, I mean, is, is, do you want to add anything to that? Or? I don't have The any. cards look really... I mean, the pictures on the card are... Yeah, no, it, it has, it has well. pretty good artwork, and the card matches the character fairly well. I mean, they're not exact, but they are pretty The downside good. is come up, some of them are really close, like from that behind. That is true, but the thing two is... Two brown guys with, like... I think they have Pointy hats. like characters to where like here's a big guy, here's a big guy. Obviously they look different, but they have a lot of the same attributes too mm-hmm. when it comes to specialties, which is nice because there's two little guys yeah. too, and those are kind of harder to distinguish. The two ladies that I had both hold one sword and both are leaning to a certain direction, so it's always been hard for me to f- figure out those two. It's just because you're colorblind. <laughs> we'll blame it on that's, that. probably, that's probably it. We'll so, blame it on that. Uh, well, uh, rating the game. Sure. Our scales one to ten. One means an abomination of game, avoid it at all costs. Ten means you should run out and buy it as soon as you can find it can, on the shelves. How much is this game? Um, that I cannot recall. Uh, we've had this one for a while. I don't look at me. I didn't buy it. It's not mine. Yeah, I think it's, it's I think it's around fifty dollars, fifty ish. Yep. And then uh, with ages to play. 
Ages. The ages on this are... Where's the box? It's hiding. Why don't you always throw this out at the last second? Hey, Knowing yeah. we don't have the box on the table. You always do this. Well, let's just let's just say, what, what would you assume? I would if say, I had to recommend, I would say a le- minimum of 10. Minimum 10? Minimum? Yeah, 10 enough. I'd say, I'd say 10 12, 14. Yeah. No, I, that's why I said minimum. Don't go lower than I, I no, played, no, no, no. I would say... Like, I, I played with my 12 and 14 year old. I played with okay. my 12 and 14 year old. And uh, they did. I probably wouldn't play with my uh, 10 or 9 year old. I think it's a little too advanced them, but I played with my 12 and 14 year old. And, and they did fairly well with it. And also don't play with... Um, little kids are people who don't like the whole cut. I mean, it's very cutthroat at the end. Yeah. And people who take things personally, you don't want to play this with them. Yeah, because you're you're basically trying to screw somebody over. Yeah, so losers losers are not going to like this game. You're stabbing somebody in the back on purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we were pretty laid back this last game. Like, it was very obvious at the end, like, okay, Andrew's going to win, and we just, you know, just play to have fun. So, 1 through 10, uh, and uh, what would you give it? Uh, I'd do 5. Probably wouldn't buy it. If the game, if somebody's asking if you want to play it a little bit, I'd kind of probably just be like, no, just get anything else. Um, it didn't really do it for me. Um, it there's a lot of components, a lot of differences, and just I think the game plays too long, and it and it's just you're kind of just sitting there waiting most of the time, and it doesn't seem like it just excites me that to do that. Okay, that's I mean that's really. I'm kind of surprised because the first time. Um, I came to game night late, and you guys had already started. I didn't play, because it's four players, unless you buy that add-on. So there were four of them playing, and you kept going on about how much you liked it, and it was really good, and mm-hmm. I should try it sometime. It, and now that you've played it a few more times, you've gone yeah, down I'm that really, much. Really, really, yeah, I probably would have been like, it's an eight, it's so great game, but it's just, it really is, you're just sitting and waiting for everybody else to go. And then, even if you get attacked, it's not really that you know, fun, I don't know. It's If you're really good at rolling dice, maybe you're, you really have an edge, I guess, but... There's a lot of randomness. I'll give you that with the die. Yeah, yeah, the dice. Right. Anybody can attack anybody. Okay, you so you gave it a five. five. I, okay. I do, I'm middle of the road. Yeah. You know, it's it's decent to play, but it just takes a really long time to do it. I would give this... Uh, I'd probably give this... Uh, between six... I'd probably give it a seven. Six and a half, seven. Um... It's a uh, it's it's a lot more interesting. The, if you're more aggressive with it, uh, it, it can be a little bit of fun. It does. It, there are times when it can drag out, especially if you have people who have uh, analysis paralysis, where they're like, "Well, I can do this and this and this and this." Um, uh, if you have a hard time identifying what the characters are, that drags out the game a little bit more because you're searching which character is this. So it, it comes with like, again, uh, the game itself actually comes with bases for them, and we just don't have them on uh, our colored miniatures here. Um, so it can drag out a little bit that way. But I, I do like the the theme of it. I do like the idea in that you never know exactly what treasures you're going to get, and there's a little cutthroat that I can steal from you, and uh, there's some decision-making about where I want to place it. So the strategy and the overall theme and the uh, the ability to cutthroat a little bit at the end uh, appeals to me. Um, yeah, I'll definitely go higher than the five. That kind of surprised me, I'll be honest. Really? So, well, because you were the first person who like made me really eager to play it, because you kept well, going on about it that first night. You know, it's um, just the newness, I think, really got to me. In that it could be. <laughs> and then after three or four gameplays, you kind of... But I'm not going to say I love it, though. No. I, I was actually a little bit disappointed. I'm going to go six five. Yeah. It's, it's a seven. little bit above average. I would agree with you. I will... Play it if somebody brings it out and says, "Do you want to play Cadwallon?" I'll go, "Yeah, okay." But you wouldn't. Play but I have players. a whole wall of board games over here I'd rather play. Yeah. Um, gorgeous artwork and pieces, and I do like the theme of being thieves and sneaking around and stealing and the treasure chest and its old medieval dungeons and dragons well, or whatever. Very cool character models and and, and another beasts. Thing, another thing to say that before we're gone, we've only really played one of the scenarios. There's there's other scenarios that would that would change this as well. So um, keep that in mind. We would, would it we'd make it longer? No. Yeah, what makes sure, sure, yeah, um, this is pretty yeah, There is a yeah. lot of downtime. I mean, we're and that's, to that takes away from it, on, in my opinion, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and I almost would like to see, I don't know, is one of the scenarios maybe co op or working together? Yep. I there's think also, teams. There's also scenarios or, where. Kind of cool. Should we bring the zombie board out here? Yeah. Zombie side pieces and stuff. Well, actually, they have, they, have a zombie, they have a zombie theme for one of the scenarios, but there's also a scenario where if she ends up in your in your place, you're out of the game. Your character gets kicked out oh. of the game, so it's it's much more aggressive um, when you're playing with some of these other characters. So um, mm-hmm. playing playing one scenario a little bit can I'm, be can be dragon. Okay. Either way, I'm at a six five. That's I think that's a pretty fair review on, on my part. There, it's just too long for what it is. Okay. Well, would I go out and buy two copies of this to support the company? No. <laughs> would I go out and buy one copy? Iffy. I'm gonna give it a six. Uh, it. I love the design of it. It's it is very neat. All the Everything's nice. I don't like the miniature cards, but that's just me. That's personal preference. Uh, otherwise, everything's nice. You know, it's pretty sturdy. Things don't slide around. You know, the coins are 
done well. The characters, especially these painted ones. Uh, we just pulled these out tonight. Those are very nice to look at. Um, but it just, it's, it just doesn't play fast enough for me. And then on these little cards, are, you get attributes. Like this one's an alarm card where if somebody doesn't open this, you can alarm. And it just doesn't seem like there's enough stabbing people in the back for me for this game. To where when you think of thieves that you can't trust anyone. I don't even know if I'd trust my own guild. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's just my own personal problem. I don't trust myself. But no, <laughs> it, it just it didn't quite do it for me because it wasn't quick enough. Um and the rules get a little complicated at times, and sometimes it feels like there's just too much going on for such a slower-paced game. So I'd give it a six. But I've played it three times now, and I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. So, Seven. Well, there you go. There's Codwall and City of Thieves. Do we have any game for next week? I'm thinking Alcatraz the Scapegoat. Okay. That's fresh on our memory. We played that tonight, too. Should we do that next time? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Going to be our Scapegoat? Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, I won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time.